Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to an Unfiltered with Pastor David, a random moment. You know, recently we've been speaking off camera uh, regarding the role of the title pastor. And I was sharing with you that sometimes in circles, certain circles, when, uh, for me at least, my own thing, when uh, people don't reference you as Pastor David, I get it, it bothers me. <laughs> uh, and uh, <clears throat> but then taking it a step further, uh, I wanted to spend a little bit more time on this. Is when people say when they people will reference to somebody as my pastor, mm-hmm. and and then later on may decide to leave or go and then come back and attend somewhere else. Has that role, that that title, my pastor, lost its potency in a sense? I think that the term my pastor is just a general term people use. A pastor, the word pastor speaks of one who is going to tenderly care for and, and feed the sheep. The shepherd is to do that. And so a pastor, elder, a pastor leader, is one who has an affectionate relationship with people in the church, you know, primarily. So it's possible to be a member of a church that is pastored by an individual and and perhaps because the church is so large, never really even have a personal time or, um, you know, um, name basis with the man who is shepherding the church. And that's just today we have, um, that's a reality. So from my perspective, there are people who use the term pastor as a title. It's something that they use to to define what that person does in the church. (laughs) Excuse me, and a number of people do that. Uh, I I was sharing with you and with the men recently that um, it takes a while for somebody to actually be a shepherd to somebody. So they're going to use the title pastor as they do here in this church they approach me and they'll say pastor david but uh that doesn't mean that i actually have that position that simply means that's the title that i have here in this church over time though there are those who may regard me in a more tender way in a more personal way and and it becomes it becomes what they know me as as their pastor i had one pastor you know and um and that was Chuck Smith. There was another in my life that I loved very much and I considered an interim type pastor. As a matter of fact, he was dear to me in that fashion, but that was a short-lived relationship. Ultimately, when Pastor Chuck um, and I became more, more uh, acquainted, when he and I actually developed something beyond a, hi, how, how are you, you know, how's it going, hello, um, that kind of thing, when it got beyond that, um, I realized that this is the man who shepherded me. This is the man who feeds my soul. This is the man that I'll go to for advice or correction when necessary. Um, he's the one that I'll ask uh, for prayer. You know, I, I remember on a couple of particular occurrences that uh, I had told him, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, Chuck, but I've never asked you to pray for me, that the Lord would fill me. And that was a special moment with me and uh, and my pastor. Or we went through some pain, my wife and I, and I went to see him, sat in his office and and shared my heart and received his prayer. When my my father went to be with Jesus, Marie gave him a call at home and and I spoke to him and he comforted me over the phone. He was more than just a man who stood in that in that pulpit or the man who led the Calvary Chapel movement. He was my shepherd and I had love for him. And so there's a difference. So some guys will, some people will say Pastor David and that's just a title. Other people will say this is my shepherd and there's a different relationship. I mean, even when you're just sharing that with Pastor Chuck, he was there for you when his father passed away. I think of my own life. Mm-hmm. And when my dad passed away that you were the way you called me in and, and poured your heart out to me. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but again, I, I hear people will reference pastors as just their pastor. But like for myself and, and a lot of the guys, when they say, when, when they reference to you as my pastor, there's a lot there. And I don't know if today that is thrown around so loosely that, uh, that it's kind of lost significance as just a title. For me, at least, it's something that you've earned and God has anointed you with. And, 
And then it goes beyond that in the role that you play in my life and a lot of the guys' life and a lot of the family's life here where uh, you're truly our pastor and grateful for that mm -hmm. and for all that you've done. Uh, and uh, But, you know, today I, I just kind of see a lot of past, you know, that's my pastor, but then they're quick to go somewhere else or they're quick to. Well, they're not, they don't have relationship with that person. You know, a shepherd you know, can't always, again, in, in a church as large as many churches today in the United States, it's, it's very difficult for that one person to really maintain that many relationships. And so you have to give him room. You have to. And, and yet, on the other hand, uh, sometimes the churches are packed because the person who is leading it isn't really a shepherd at all. He's more a, of, a, we'll say, a communicator or something like that. So the church fills up with people, but the problem is, is the sheep become like the shepherd. So the things that the shepherd believes to be important, that he feeds constantly to the, to the sheep, these are the things that some embrace and, and it changes their lives, you know, and then some guys are feeding things to their, their church that aren't necessarily even, even spiritual in, their, in, in, you know, in the sense of it being scriptural we're going through the word of god these are the things sometimes they're just current events or sometimes they're um whatever is on their heart that day a lot of times the shepherd comes out and will give a a topical study about whatever it is he's thinking about whether it's prophecy or you know current world conditions or who to vote for or what's going on in the middle east or whatever i mean they'll come out and they'll do these things and it's so in impersonal that he becomes kind of like a celebrity on the stage who becomes their personal news broadcaster. And, and uh, then he has other people around him to do the work of ministry that he is not qualified or called to do because in his mind, what he's doing is shepherding them. And, and if you spoke to him and said, but you don't have any relationship, you, you, don't, have, uh, you don't have ministry for, for people in your church, um, why? Well, he wouldn't have an answer. And, and if you asked him in front of one of his devotees, they're going to stand up and tell you what a great man he is. We see that. You see that. That's part of what, what's going on in the church today. So we, with intent, want to be ministers to those that God has entrusted to us. And we, we want to. That doesn't mean that I am. That doesn't mean I'm that good at it because God knows I'm not, but I do the best I can in him. And, um, you know, I, that's the way it works. And so I think everybody has their own gifting, their own things that the Lord has placed on their heart, John. And, and, and in the church, you have people who will sit in one place and go to another. I, I remember someone who was speaking to a friend of mine who said, well, my Sunday morning church is this church. My Sunday night church is this church. My Wednesday night church is this church. Three different churches that they were going to. Not one of those churches was that person giving his gifts to. Not one of those churches was he using his spiritual gifts in. He was just a consumer because a lot of churches are, are, are like that. We have a product, a product is consumed. The people come and eat and then they leave. And um, so there's no, there's no connection. But the, the sheep know the shepherd and the shepherd knows them. And there's that relationship and they follow him. They know his voice. And he feeds and tenderly cares for them. And he has uh, character qualifications. And, you know, he's, he's somebody that, that God has entrusted the souls of people to. And a true shepherd really, really is aware of that. So there are a lot of hirelings. There are a lot of public speakers. There are a lot of great communicators. There are a lot of people who can get you jumping in that aisle and excited and all of that. And, well, it's not, all, it's not how high you jump, it's how straight you walk. And if you're not getting, when you land, and it's, if you're not getting fed, you're being hyped. And that's just the way it is. So I believe that, yeah, there are a lot of people who, well, they, they, they come up and call me pastor, but that's just a title to them. Over time, uh, it may become a reality. I, I, may be have, I may have more of a connection in their life. I, I may have more of that place, but I don't tell people what to call me. You know, they call me a lot of things, and sometimes they call me pastor, but uh, that's the general truth of that. 
Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. And, uh, and again, we're so thankful as a church family on behalf of the men's ministry. I know I can speak in for a lot of people here. Thankful to have a pastor such as you that lead us week in and week out through the, God, through the Word of God. Something that's so needed today. Oh, thank you. Uh, with that, Pastor, I want to invite our church family to come on out Wednesday evening, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. as you're talking about the boots that are shot at boot. Uh, Having your feet shot with the preparation of the I better start reading piece. my Bible. You better, because I don't see any boots in that verse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These boots are made for walking, John, all right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, our, our, the, it's not even a weapon. It's more of a protection. And so I know we'll give some insight into yes, that. Yes, and so I want to have you guys come on out and join us. And then church family, always put it before you. Our Israel trip's coming up in March. Uh, great opportunity to go with Pastor David and Marie and the church family to Israel. I mean, it's a life changer. And even if you're not part of this church family, yes, we, yes, we please. welcome you. Yes, and you can actually go on our website, uh, calvaryccv.org. Go to the events tab, and under the events tab, you will see the Israel trip there. We'd love to have you come out and join. Uh, and, uh, and thank you again, Pastor David. Amen. God bless you guys, and we look forward to seeing you.